thank you. Just wanted to. Um, you may have some questions about College Credit Plus. You may be wondering what College Credit Plus is. What are the different ways that students can earn college credit while in high school? What are the benefits and the risks of participating in a College Credit Plus class? How does the participation in the class impact the student's high school transcript and the college transcript? How is it funded? And what are the steps of getting a course funded? And also, how do colleges use college credit or the credits that are earned? Um, so for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Patty Creighton, I'm the Counseling Department Chair. I am very happy to introduce Pam Allen from Ohio Lincoln University. Pam has been so helpful and work with our students, our parents, and our teachers on Ohio Dominican's College Credit Plus courses that are taught here at Bishop Watterson. So please welcome Pam. Thank you. Well, again, thank you for being here um, this evening. And uh, I do want to answer your questions. I know a lot of this information can be a little bit overwhelming or confusing, especially if this is the first time that you've heard about this or taking a college course, so feel free to ask questions as we go through the program. Um, you're very fortunate at Bishop Watterson that we have uh, several of the instructors here that are Ohio Dominican adjunct instructors. They qualify because they have a master's degree in the content area, and they're able to teach our courses here during the regular high school day at the convenience of the students. And so they're earning both high school credit and college credit. So I want you to take advantage of that opportunity because over 17 courses, college courses, are offered here. So that's highly convenient for you as a student to take those courses. So I just wanted to throw that out there and make sure that you, uh, you understand that. So what is College Credit Plus? Well, it's transcripted college credit. And that means you're getting both high school credit and college credit for the course that you're taking. Um, it allows you to um, stay at the high school, as I mentioned, to earn those college credits. And it allows you to remain challenged uh, by taking uh, rigorous coursework and it allows you to hopefully enjoy and learn more about college courses and maybe do a little bit of exploring about the college content. Students that are in grades 7 through 12 can uh, take a college course if they qualify based on the admissions criteria and having the prerequisite coursework. Um, they do need to be admitted to either the private or the public university. And um, you do have to meet all of our admissions criteria, which I'll go through in just a minute. Now, as I mentioned, we have 17 courses that are offered right here at Bishop Watterson. Uh, however, some students might want to take a course on a college campus or they might have time to take a course online. So those options are available to you as well. The courses cannot be remedial and they must be non-sectarian, meaning they can't be like a theology course or a religion course. And I should mention that you have this PowerPoint uh, presentation as well. And I'm going fairly quickly, but I wanted you to have the slides so that you can refer back to this information. But it's the, the black and white handout that I provided. So with the Ohio Dominican Project Jumpstart program and the College Credit Plus program that we have, you're both a high school student and a college student at the same time. And the courses count towards your high school diploma as well as towards an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. So you're really saving time. You're taking a course that counts both towards high school graduation as well as towards a college degree. And again, you are fortunate. Bishop Watterson has you know, 17 instructors that are teaching our college courses right here. So you don't have to leave the high school. You don't have to worry about getting onto a college campus, the convenience is built in with this program. Obviously, it's going to save you some time and money by taking college courses while you're still a high school student. That is what the goal of College Credit Plus. They want more high school students to be earning uh, college
college credits. And of course, you're one of our students when you're enrolled in our courses, so you receive all the same benefits of being a college student. You're welcome to come onto campus and take advantage of our services. You can use our online uh, library databases, our online materials. We have online tutoring or face-to-face -face tutoring for any course. You can enjoy our fitness center or engage in any of our other activities that we have on campus in terms of <coughs> student organizations or we have a lot of campus speakers and you're welcome to attend any of those events. If you come to campus and want to get a student ID, you can do that in our public safety office and um, you can get a physical student ID, photo ID, but you do have to come to campus to actually get that. There are some potential risks. Um, mostly, you have to understand that this is a college course and it's going to be rigorous and you don't want to overload yourself based on all the other activities that you might be involved in as a high school student. So you've got to keep that balance in mind. Um, if you do choose to take a college course on a college campus, keep in mind that transportation is not provided. And keep in mind that the university schedule is different than your high school schedule. Their breaks are different than your breaks. Um, today, if there was a snow day for a school district, the university was open the whole day. So, you know, even though the high school might be closed, you're still responsible for attending your college course on a college campus. So you follow the university schedule for that college course, not your high school schedule. Okay. Uh, you do need to check with out-of-state or uh, other private universities to make sure the course you're taking will transfer if you're planning to attend a different university than the one that you're taking the credit from, so that's important. Uh, tuition. Who pays tuition? It's, it's kind of a combination. Um, but the state of Ohio has awarded for this year, 2016-17, um, they have uh, decided uh, in, in looking at what happened this previous year that they would like to provide a one four credit hour course, one college course for every uh, private high school student in grades seven through 12. So when I talk about the, the funding application in a few minutes, you will need to report how many courses you plan to take for college credit and keep in mind that they hope to award each student at least funding, state funding, for one course, starting with seniors and then juniors, sophomores, freshmen, any eighth graders or seventh graders that are taking a college course. Any courses above and beyond that amount that you would like to take probably won't be state funded. So that means that you're paying our reduced tuition rate for any additional college courses. Um, so I'll give you an example. Let's say that you sign up for our Calculus 1 course, Math 240, and that is a four credit hour course. And you apply for state funding, you receive your funding award letter, and we just need a copy of that letter, and that tuition is covered by the state. ODU actually receives $41 per credit hour for that course. <laughs> so we don't, we don't get a whole lot of money, but that's okay. You know, it's funded, you get that course for free, and we're happy for you. But let's say that you'd also like to take Spanish 212. Well, you receive the, the one course, um, state funded, but if you want to take another college course, that one you will pay our reduced tuition amount, which is $65 per credit hour. It's still a great deal, I think, because that course would only cost $195. But you need to know that up front, that if you're signing up for more than one college course for next year, the funding really only covers one course. The rest are going to be coming out of your budget. And you can use um, the 529 Education Savings Plan to pay for those. Uh, but I, you know, I just need to be upfront that you will receive a bill from Ohio Dominican to cover.
cover any additional courses that you would like to take. Keep in mind, this is a huge cost savings because normally one of our courses is usually about $1,800. So you're getting it for $195 um, as, a, as a bargain. And I, I realize that um, it may be something that you had planned on, but it's something that you can think about in any case. It does save you quite a, quite a few dollars if you're taking a college course at that rate. Question. This year, if you took a whole year a course that was all both semesters, they only paid for one semester, is that what you consider one course or is that for the whole year? A two semester course. My son's taking AP history and they only paid for the first semester. It depends on what high school, are they here at Bishop Watterson? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for American history, we divided into our two courses as we normally would on the college campus. So they can sign up for History 201, which is American History 1 in the fall, and earn three college credits. And then they can also sign up for the spring course, which is History 202, American History 2, which is the second half of the course, and earn another three college credits. They don't have to. Uh, they don't have to sign up for that second half for college credit if they don't want to because obviously they might have to pay for it if they only got the first three credits funded. So we give you that option. Does that help? Yeah, okay. But, but the example here at Calc is a whole year course in high school that's a one semester normally in college. The way that they have it set up here at Bishop Watterson, you are correct. Their calculus course here is a full year and it's four credits, four college credits. Um, but if that is what you're signing up for for next year, it would be funded if that was the only course that you were wanting to have covered. Yes. Uh, I will mention summer. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of students that are interested in taking a summer course, but if you are ambitious and you really want to take a college course over the summer and you've got some time, you're not going anywhere on vacation, and you really want to take a summer class, we love, we would love to have you. It's great to be on campus during the summer. It's pretty laid back, and, and I know you would enjoy it, but it isn't for everybody. And so I want to let you know that yes, you can come to uh, Ohio Dominican this summer and take a college course. It is accelerated. Most classes run either four, five, six, or seven weeks, so you're taking a 16-week course and you're really condensing it and finishing it in a short amount of time, which means you might be in class, you know, two or three days a week, you might be in class for three hours at a time, you know, think of a science class where you've got lab and, you know, it's a little bit more intense. So I think it is for the student that's a, a little bit more ambitious and wants to maybe jump ahead and, and get a college course uh, over the summer. I do have materials if you're interested or think you might be interested in taking a summer class. We offer classes that we're not offering here at Bishop Watterson. So it might be a way to sort of supplement what's not being offered uh, for college credit. So you're welcome to pick those materials up. I know someone that wants to take a summer class. This is just an example of a 15 college credit pathway, just to show you an example of what's offered at Bishop Watterson and how you could accumulate 15 credit hours of college credit. Um, this is just an example. And this is an example of how you could accumulate 30 college credits, 31 college credits chemistry this year. Chemistry is a poor credit in our class. So it's just an example of if you start as a ninth grader or a tenth grader, you can actually start accumulating those credits um, and have earned quite a few credits by the time you finish high school. So it's a way to sort of plan ahead and think ahead about what you might like to take. transcript as well as the college transcript and the college classes do 
show up on your high school transcript as well. They're part of your permanent record. Uh, you do need to consider your workload when you're thinking about taking college courses along with all your high school courses. The GPA is impacted by both courses, so the GPA is calculated using the final grade for the college course that goes into your high school overall GPA. And it doesn't happen very often, but a student who would uh, fail a course, I mean, it shows up on both the high school transcript and the college transcript. Keep in mind that you have many options. You have the college credit option, you have uh, AP that's offered here at Bishop Watterson, you have honors courses, and college admissions really look at all of those very favorably. They're looking for the amount of rigor and the types of courses that you've taken. They look for you know, how much math you've taken. I'm sure your school counselors are always encouraging you to take as much math as possible and science and foreign language. So again, um, you have many options, and so I want you to feel, feel positive about those options and not feel like you have to stick with one or two. They're all viewed very favorably with college admissions. We get a lot of questions about transferring credit. If you are transferring credit to a public university, there is a website that you can refer to to see, okay, do these credits transfer? And I would say that 95, 99% of the time they do. There are some exceptions. Um, Ohio Dominican uh, is very transfer friendly as well. Our courses have had good success in transferring both in-state and out-of-state as long as you earn a grade of C or higher. Uh, there are some courses that, um, there are some colleges and universities that are not very transfer friendly. And those typically are the Ivy League schools. So if you're thinking about going to an Ivy League college after high school, you probably want to contact them ahead of time just to see how they handle any type of college credit that you've acquired in high school. Most of them will not honor it. They'll say, you have to take all of our courses at our university because we're great, we're wonderful, and you're taking all of your courses with us. Well, that's fine. Um, the fact that you've taken the college credits is going to help you. It will give you the knowledge and uh, the experience of taking the college course. And you might be able to test out of uh, their entry level courses. So you would always want to ask the chair of that department, if it's math, if it's science, if it's English, see if you can test out <coughs> that first course because you probably already conquered and mastered the objectives of that first course. So see if you can do that and at least you wouldn't have to take it again. Um, you wouldn't get college credit for it, but at least you wouldn't have to repeat the course. Again, as long as you earn a C or a C minus, um, most of the universities are accepting these courses for transfer credit. And again, the courses that we offer are offered for an associate's or a bachelor's degree. These are considered general education courses that every college student needs to take. So they're going to be your English, college English writing, college English literature, uh, the math courses, science courses, business courses, foreign languages, those are all required for most college students. So it isn't like you're throwing away any credits. You will use these credits for your degree. <coughs> A little bit about Ohio Dominican. We're over on Sudbury Road. We are a Catholic Dominican University. And we uh, have about 2,700 students, so we know our students pretty well. We offer over 40 undergraduate majors and nine graduate degree programs and certificate programs. And so consider us um, when you're thinking about college. We offer a wide range of academic majors, from accounting to sports management to exercise science. So check us out. 
for our admission criteria for taking a Project Jumpstart College Credit Plus course, you do need to have at least a 2.3 overall GPA and have taken the ACT or SAT if you're ready to take that, you need an 18 if you've taken that. If you're not ready to take the ACT or SAT, let's say you're a sophomore or a junior and you just haven't taken it, that's fine, then you would need at least a 2.75 overall GPA to qualify to participate in our program. And of course, any prerequisite courses for the class that you're planning to take. The first step, and I know that you have a check sheet, a yellow check sheet that um, uh, Patty has given you. The first step is you want to request that your transcript be sent to Ohio Dominican. Then you'll go online to our website at ohiodominican.edu backslash participating schools. And we should have all the courses that we're offering next year up there by February 1st. You're going to go online. You'll fill out a very short online application. And the first page, it just asks for your contact information. We do ask for your social security number. And then on page two, you're going to select the courses and submit. So it's pretty pretty straightforward. Then we're going to send you an admissions letter. And you need to keep a copy of that admissions letter for the, the funding. And you also need to fill out the intent to participate form. Um, that's on the Ohio Department of Education website. So you're letting the department know and you're letting your school counselors know that you intend to take a college course next year. You'll go to this website and the form should be there, hopefully by February 1st is what they're saying. And you'll take a copy of our acceptance letter and the, there should be the funding application. You'll complete that and you need to submit both documents by April 1st this year, April 1st, 2016. It will take about five weeks for the Ohio Department of Education to send you an award letter and so look for that around mid-May and then uh, we're asking that you send a copy of that funding award letter to Bishop Watterson by May 27. If they're a little late in getting that out to you, obviously we'll accept it after that time. But if you have it, we don't want you to throw it away. We don't want you to lose it over the summer. So we're asking that you do submit a copy of that funding award letter to us um, you know, by May 27th, if at all possible. So this is just kind of a, the breakdown again. If you've registered for more than one college course and you're not getting any additional state funding beyond that one course, again, we're, we've offered this reduced re tuition rate for probably 11 or 12 years. So we have not increased our rate. It's $65 per credit hour. So a three credit hour course is $195 and a four credit hour course is $260. So. That's just something to keep in mind. And we give you quite a bit of time to pay for it. Um, we'll send you a bill, and it will be due October 5th. The payment will be due October 5th to have the minute day. Questions about that? Yeah. Are there textbook fees above and beyond that? No, your high school provides the textbook and the materials. So. Is OSU accepting your ODU CC Plus? We've had very good success with all of our in-state universities, including Ohio State, Case Western, um, out-of-state universities are accepting our credits, so they've been really good. Yeah. I'm just going to have to offer a clarification. We just went to Case Western. They said college credit who? They do not accept it. Uh -huh. You go back, you take the course on a, a ground level, you take AP, they will not accept that. You are taking their course over again. And that's, that's where they are. We just went through the whole, um, asked all the questions. Uh, will they accept the AP exam? Um, it's all the colleges we've looked at. We're looking at I think they all accept five. I had said that the College Credit Plus class was used towards graduation credits, and they would not use it if it was beyond that, unless they changed the I, I asked for science for, um, for Claire, 
And they said, nope, you were going, because they were finding out that the kids, even though they've taken this AP, and even though they've taken that, they are not prepared. And then they're losing them. So they must have changed their policy. Um, so they won't but that's what they used for a graduation credit, though. I don't know how they, the gal that we talked to said, college credit who? <laughs> um, so I don't think they're on board. Um, and AP, I was shocked. But I said, do you even take, like, if you took out a five on the AP, could you take a placement test? And they said, no because they are finding the kids, what they're teaching for their science on a freshman level is not what is happening, and they're losing the kids. Our next parent meeting on the 20th with my son, my aunt, um, Case Western representatives coming here. Okay. She'll be here to do that meeting, plus we'll do our part, and she'll do her, her part. So we can ask her to clarify that for us, too. And it could be that they've had a change in their admissions policies, because they used to at least accept our credits for elective credit. You, know, you, might, you might be able to geek out if that is not your major. Yeah. Um, like if you're, you're if you're a medical you want to do pre med and you have a history, they might geek out an elective. Yeah. Um, but if it is your major, they are not accepting. They're not accepting. That. That's the way for a little bit. Okay. All right. Well, it's good that you asked, and it's good that you clarify. So that's that's news. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, question. Yes. Okay. I just want to send a clarification. Um, as well. Um, my son went to Kent State. He took courses from ODU as well while he was in high school. They did all transfer. However, he did have to score a certain um, value on a placement test. Once he did, then the course was transferred. So I don't know if any other schools are doing that, but that was how it is transferred. That's a good point. A lot of universities still use placement tests. So when you're going to college, they might say, well, we know you've earned college credit, but we still want you to see, we still want to see where you place for math, or place for foreign language, or place in English. And so that can happen if uh, for some reason a student would not place in the appropriate course that they think they're ready for, they might end up having to retake you know, a certain math or English course. At Ohio Dominican, we don't use placement tests. So uh, we look at your high school transcript, we look at your college courses that you've taken, and we go based on uh, what you've completed. And uh, so every university is slightly different, so those are good, good points to, to think about. Well, again, uh, you need to submit your transcripts to Ohio Dominican and ask for those from the guidance office and they'll send us a copy of your transcripts. You can apply beginning February 1st for the courses that we're offering. And then you'll complete your intent to participate form with the Ohio Department of Education. That should also be available to you starting around February 1st from their website. You'll receive an acceptance letter from us and then you'll take that acceptance letter and you'll fill out the funding application Form, which is on the Ohio Department of Education website. You'll submit the acceptance letter, that form, and you should get an award letter <coughs> around mid-May. We just need a copy of that letter. Yeah. If for some reason, um, you know, we were not uh, awarded any funding, or you just forget to fill out the funding application, or something goes awry, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, you could still register for our courses up until September 14th, but obviously you wouldn't receive any state award funding because that deadline is April 1st to apply for any state funding. So just so you're aware of that. basic information. You 
know, just how many courses you're planning to take, how many credit hours you're planning to take. Um, and then you sign it and then send it in. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward information. Is it the one for the non-public school? It is. Okay. It's one for the non-public. So the home school, the non-public, and the public, which are all different. Okay. Right. You want to make sure that you fill it out for the non-public high school student, not the home school student, not the other student. Um, but we'll help you. If you have questions about it, we can help you. And, and um, it's just important to ask those questions well before April 1st, because that is the absolute deadline, and the state does not make any exceptions. They are very adamant about their, their timeline. So, question, yes? I'd like to. What is that if you have a junior right now that's in the program that they have to reapply to OU for next year? And the second is if they take you the ACT, do we have to pay money to get an ACT score to come in? No. Um, our registration is based on the courses that they want to take each year. So yes, every year that they want to take an ODU course here at Bishop Watterson, we do ask that you go online and complete that online application because on the second page, that is where you'll select the courses that they want to take for that year. So that's the part that is different every year. So yes, we do ask that you do that. Um, we just need the ACT score, and usually it's on the transcript, but it isn't, okay? So um, we don't want you to pay for a report. We just need a copy of the report. If you have a copy, that's fine. Yeah, so good. And my contact information is here, and Kim Gurley in the admissions office at Ohio Dominican, her contact information is there as well, and we can help answer questions. Yes? I don't know if we have any families uh, from our feeder schools, like with children in seventh or eighth grade right now, but how's it being handled when a child who says she's in seventh grade this year, she'll be in eighth grade next year, she doesn't really have a GPA yet. She might even just be getting like checks and pluses. How is that gonna be handled at that level? You know, we really haven't ran into that. I think a lot of times we're going to be counting on the school counselor and the teachers to say, is this, a level work, B level work, we have to somehow make a comparable uh, grade out of those um, those courses that they've completed. Okay. So that's a good question. Other questions? Yes. How does it fit in with the AB test? I mean, I know a college will take one or the other, but there's a river going around that you can't take the AB test. You don't have you can, to take it. I mean, you can take a test. Anybody can take it. You don't have to take a class to take a AP test. Mm -hmm. So if they're in a high Dominican course, they can still take the AP test. You're just not going to get credit from both oh, sources. Yeah, I understand that. So you can transcript will have a high Dominican course listed on it, but you can still take that and get the score sent to the school. I, I guess I look at it as a plan B. If they go out of state, the AP, they'll take the AP exam. Like a five, if they don't take the the course. The, the course. Unless you're not to. I mean, it's only Unless you're in Ivy League school. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> yeah. But it's only 80 bucks for the AP test, so. So that really confused me. If we're told we're in the only AP classes, the when I was back in high school, it was everybody that was going to take the AP test took the AP class for the entire year and then took a test at the end. And if you Past that, then you got the extra credit that transferred to high school. So you're saying these college courses aren't the same? And is there another Bishop Parson class that's just AP that's not the college credit plus? There are some AP classes that aren't college credit plus, but the way this is set up, most of the courses are incorporated into an AP class. So students will sign up for the AP class, and then if they decide to do the high Dominican course, then we'll, we'll change the name on the transcript to be, reflect the high Dominican that they still get the same content that's in the AP class, but can they're getting the information to take the AP test. They're still able to do that. Okay. So I'm confused about the test. The AP test versus the college credit test. So if they're in an AP class, it's not a college credit. I mean the the, the, the course class. <laughs> yeah. So they're in an AP class and they decided to call a college credit class. There's nothing stopping them. 
from using their knowledge they gained in that class from taking an AP test. There's no not required. Any student can take any AP test if they've never taken the courses. There is a pink, it's a pink hand out there that if you don't mind putting your name on the bottom side of the bottom of that, your student's name, and there's a box in the back to put that in. Um, that will just show us that you've participated in this, this counseling program. Any more questions? Thank you so much for your questions and attention, and I'm happy to stay and answer any additional questions. Can I just address one thing? My name is Lisa Kleiner, and I don't know all of you because my alphabet is just A through F, but I am also lucky enough to be the AP coordinator for the building. So if you have questions, even if I'm not your child's counselor, do not hesitate to contact me by phone or email, and I'm happy to answer your AP questions. I know AP season is coming up, and um, probably some of your students have started talking about that type of testing, and don't feel like you can't contact me here at school. I'm happy to answer your questions to the best of my abilities. Please keep watching Waters and Wednesday News, which I know you all do. Thank you for keep doing that. And then there's, if you're a junior parent at the end, this is supposed to be a month, I don't have the date in my mind, uh, there's a junior parent meeting, and it's going to be on selective college admission, so that's the case Western person is going to be here for that as well. 26. Right. 26. Thank you.